Hey, I'm Koi Jondro, and this is Comic Book Shopping. We're about to team up with Zachary Levi, yes, Shazam himself, to buy some sweet comics. That guy hits that guy. <laughs> Pow, oh yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? I, I have always been a man-child. And there are so many comics to buy. You're not ready, I'm not ready. So we're here at Golden Apple Comics, we're here for comic book shopping, and I'm here with Zach Levi to do some deep dive into comics. But first, we gotta talk about a very particular comic. Yeah. Put your face on a comic, man. <laughs> I know, dude, it's so crazy. Has that gotten any less weird? I hope, you know, honestly, I hope it never really fully sinks in. I hope I'm like 95 on some like rocking chair, <laughs> and I just have this moment of like, holy shit, I was just saying. Like, I want that to happen. And this is so insane to, for them to like basically recover, rebrand it to tie in with the movie and that and I like get to the be parallel, like the oh, heavens yeah, all man. side by side. And all of this incredible art that's coming out that yeah. people are doing these variants on and you know, and obviously stuff from the past. I mean, it's- You're a silver like age I, icon. I, I, dude, like a, so a time before your time. So when you're yeah. 95, oh, yeah, yeah, it'll yeah. be like, why am I? And they printed <laughs> yeah, exactly. comics on paper. Exactly. How did you begin the world of comics? Early on in my life, you know, four years old, started recognizing that there were like, you know, these cool pictures and things, but I couldn't read, I don't yeah. know. But that's also great for comics because there's a lot of action involved. You're like, I can kind of read it. That guy hits that guy. <laughs> Pow, oh yeah. Probably like through middle school was like my most fervent years. Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld, Marvel and then starting Image, like that whole era of comics. Yeah. Which was a dope era of comics. Pouches, swords, Pouches. lots of guns, <laughs> and no ankles, zero feet, maybe, and yeah, like just <laughs> yeah. darkness. But and, and now that like you know Jim is my boss at DC, Dude, and yeah. he's, I just saw his, his he did a variant cover of me as Shazam. I was like, what is life and right Jeff now? Jeff Johns is writing you. And Jeff so Jones Jim Lee's your boss. Now, Jeff man. Johns it's, is writing you. It's all so surreal and like you know it, it doesn't really sink in. I was a big Marvel kid. I was super into X Men, X Force, X Factor, all of the X's. <laughs> <laughs> I love Gambit. He was my favorite of the X-Men. All of my other buddies want to be Wolverine all the time. And when I say want to be Wolverine, I mean, like when you're about 12 years old and you're still running around like full force pretending to be these characters. But and I was always like, okay, John, and like throwing, you know, charge cards. And Deadpool actually was my favorite character. I mean, basically Snake Eyes, but with like a really cool, fun personality. And Rob, like I think the first time I went to San Diego Comic-Con, we bumped into each other and I was a total fanboy. And I was like, bro, you have no idea. Oh, dude, Ryan Reynolds is gets it's perfect. It's made for this. He, yeah, he did such a great job. They fixed so. it. They, they, they solved the problem. Yeah. He was unsewn. Yeah. That part. He was unsewn. We've fixed a lot of problems. Yeah, and he didn't have katanas coming out of his arms <laughs> and shooting Cyclops laser he eyes. Like morph from the animated series what? for no reason. Morph. I just put that together in <laughs> this moment. Why was he oh morph? Oh my god, they I totally Ryan forgot about morph. morph. They killed Morph and they killed Deadpool oh by way of Morph. Oh my god, I totally forgot about Morph. Dark times, you guys. Well, this moment brought to you by uh, Morph. We thank wow, you. Wow, thank All you, Morph. Right, let's go talk about some modern day stuff, Let's man. do it. So now, in the modern day, you are playing Billy Batson, Shazam. You are an actual superhero. Yeah, totally, How has life changed completely. directly to you? Getting the role was an incredible experience, just that it's a complete dream come true. Not just the kid in me that always wanted to be a superhero, but the actor in me that knew, you know, these are the types of movies we can make now, make really well. And though it was super dreamy to get to play Fandral in the Thor franchise, that was a supporting character that didn't really have that much to do. So grateful to have been able to be a part of that, but always hoped and believed that I could be my own superhero. Right, yeah. you know, and so to get to be the titular character of this franchise, hopefully, you know, bring honor to it and all the fans for many, many years past, from Captain Marvel fans all the way to yeah. modern Shazam fans, and you know, that's all super, super cool and surreal. You mentioned being like a like an inner child getting to come to play and like living yeah. that world. Was yeah. there a moment on set where you realized you were more like Shazam than you thought? I wasn't aware of Shazam when I was growing up as a kid. When I read the script and I researched the character, I realized this is entirely me. This is <laughs> I, I have always been a man child. I have always been a lot. 
lot of other actors kind of get the short end of the stick because you know Jason Momoa and Ben Affleck, you know, these guys, when they get these roles, they gotta be out of their mind excited. Yeah. But then they have to play it real cool and chill. <laughs> I didn't have to do that at all. I get to show up and set in my super suit and be like, what are we doing? Come on, let's go save the world. I mean, that is so fun to be able to allow the, the kid in you yeah. to let it him be that kid. I have always really genuinely tried to have an optimism and a lust for life and, and an openness in that and, and a love toward people. And I think those are huge parts of the character, the heart, I and mean, it's why Billy is chosen. Asher definitely has, you know, a little bit of like kind of fun attitude and stuff, but he's got such a big heart, so you can't hide it. For the viewers, comics you'd recommend as a gateway drug. Like, what is the first thing you'd like comes to your mind you'd recommend for someone else to dive into if they've never touched a comic? Honestly, like old school Captain Marvel, like you know, st like that Silver Age kind of stuff was was really innocent and still had a tremendous sense of wonder. If you really want something that's got much more in depth storytelling, I would start in graphic novels, like a Why the Last Man. I think yeah. that's actually a really good intellectual stimulation of you know getting into a deep story with mythology and all this yeah. stuff. And it's so include it's so intense and inclusive. You just can yeah. do that. Oh in yeah. The whole world. And it and it tickles so many of our tastes as you know anything post apocalyptic. I'm yeah. in. like let's go. What is your take on the on the apocalypse and what happens after that? <laughs> yeah. I want it in my ear holes and eyeballs. And there's a monkey. And and there's a monkey guys, come on. What do you guys, want? What do you want? want a good capuchin monkey? <laughs> Well, that's why we're here. We're gonna check out some comics of our own right now, so yep. we'll dive into some stuff. Let's check them out. Let's do it. This book I recommend to almost everyone. This is Ed Piscor, who is a cartoonist, and it retells all of the Silver Age and Golden Age and the classic stuff, and he tweaks the mythology. So this is a complete retelling. What? So this is 10 years of comics. What? This retells <laughs> what? from the onset of X-Men, almost through Phoenix, from one man's mind. That's super cool. Okay, cool. Huck is effectively the Boy Scout of heroes, but he doesn't know what his powers are, and he's just trying to figure it out. <laughs> and the whole book- Yeah, that's, I mean, there's a lot of Shazam in there. He's a giant dude trying to figure out what his life is. Yeah. The innocence of Superman, the innocence of Shazam, but a completely new mythology. M-O-O-N, that spells Huck. That's a reference to the stand, <laughs> and nobody. He looks like the guy in the he's stand. Like he looks like Dauber thing. from Coach, who was in the stand with Gary Sinise. And he said M-O-O-N. <laughs> Guys, it's a deep yeah. cut. Oh, we're we collecting along the way? Stacks fantastic. on stacks. It's a whole I'll take journey. The lobster. Uh, so Batman had a resurgence with the new 52. So Scott Snyder has this insane book called The Court of Owls. This takes place before most of the Batmans we know. It is a very young Bruce, and the art is just oh, wow. staggering. Yeah, that's real good. And I love that the style is so photorealistic, but also still comic style. Yeah, no, no, it's it's a cool, like slightly heightened, but but still real. Yeah. So Scott Snyder really reinvented Batman in a way that didn't hurt any other mythology. Very cool. It's very hard. Very, impressive. very difficult to do. <laughs> Seventy years. Here's a new what? story. What you pleased everyone? That's oh, not possible. The internet loves you. Uh, while in the world of Batman, do you know the painter, Lieberman? Oh. So he, I'm gonna I'm gonna open this. I'm gonna oh. do a Cardinal uh -oh. Sin at a comic store, guys. I'm sorry, world. His work is frame by frame painting and then inked in a comic book style. So the way he goes into art is he thinks of it like a painter, oh. but it's it's drawing with ink and pen like we're used to. Okay, okay. But that translates into like this very splotchy, noir, mm -hmm. aggressive mm -hmm. line work. Mm -hmm. And I think that really translates to a Batman Joker story. So if you've never read Batman, this is a great place to start. Viewers of this show might catch on that this will be a book I recommend nearly every time. Deadpool Spidey. So the 90s Deadpool is, I think, a high bar for a type of comedy. Sure, And sure. I think that 60s Spider-Man is a high bar for a type <laughs> yeah, of comedy. Okay, right. I've never seen them written together where they didn't sound like a similar character. Right, right. Joe Kelly, who took over in the 90s for Deadpool, he's the one that gave him the, the multiple personalities. He's okay, the one that right. like branched out to full crazy. Copy. Came back to Deadpool, and he writes Spider-Man like Spider-Man and Deadpool like Deadpool, and you can close your eyes and hear their voices. It's oh, wow. it's incredible. Well, you can't really close your eyes and hear their voices because in order to hear their voices, you have to read what's we on read the page. We read comics very so. differently. That's a fair <laughs> point. That's a, but the art style is Ed McGinnis who helped bring Deadpool to the limelight. And then yeah. so it's two OG creators coming back to Deadpool and it's a team up book that doesn't feel like it's pandering. Spidey Deadpool, volume one, highly recommend it. 
So I personally am a go every Wednesday, pick up floppies at the store kind of guy because I love the individual comic feel. Floppies. This is a Mortal Hulk. This is a horror comic, a horror take on the Hulk. It's a full gore, full terror, full Stephen King version of the Hulk. Banner finally loses its snaps and tries to kill himself and he can't because the other guy won't let him and he basically haunts him. So it's a psychological thriller with the art of a horror comic. What? That deals with Banner just trying to be dead. Like that's Hulk. What? I think this book is so slept on and it's such a different take. Oh, and a character dude, that's from the 60s. Super kooky, yeah. Like, so that is what I recommend for you. Shall we check out? Let's go. Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. So this is our beautiful stack of the week. Awesome. What I do you think? A lot, uh, lot of good things. I'm very excited. Mortal Hulk right on top. Super good. I tried to make classic and modern and DC Marvel big houses, some indies. Oh yeah. So uh, yeah. your total is 111.48 today. Boom. Well, I hope we introduce you to something new here. Thanks, Thanks for shopping with us. Appreciate it. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. I'm Coy Jondro. This has been Comic Book Shopping. I'd like to thank Golden Apple for having us. I'd like to thank Zachary Levi for joining us. And I found out today that Shazam likes Deadpool comics. And that made me very happy. And of course, I would like, as ever, to thank comic books for existing. Thanks, guys.